Very excited about meeting our next guest tonight. This man has crossed the line between man and beast. He can communicate with an animal that we all fear. This man can talk to wolves. Have a look at this. It's dinner time. This is a dangerous time for Sean. Tension is high as each wolf tries to push its way forward. It's down to Sean to use wolf language to tell each hungry wolf what it's allowed to eat from the kill. Each wolf has a particular rank within the pack. For now, Sean is their teacher, keeping everyone in their place. Thankfully, he can speak human too, ladies and gentlemen. The Wolfman, Sean Ellis. I don't know whether to shake your hand or sniff your bum, but... Uh... <laughs> That's incredible. Mm. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it's a pretty serious business. I mean, people are kind of giggling along with it because you, the way you, the faces you have to make, the, the way you have to behave. Yeah. But that is for your own safety. It is a very dangerous position you're in there. Tell us what you're actually doing. Yeah, I think the, the, the time around the kill is the most dangerous time. That's feast and famine, battle for survival. And these guys take survival very, very seriously indeed. And, and the best way I've found of interacting with them is to speak their language. There's no mistakes there and they don't interpret a smile for being aggression and, you know, you can pretty much get through. So what are you doing? What, what, what is your overall plan with the wolves? What are you at? The overall plan, is, it's a bit like the, the old school naturalist where you kind of live with your subject for long periods of time to try and find out, I think, the valuable secrets that we're going to need to, to be able to help them. Why wolves, though? I mean, people fear yeah. them. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, what, what most people fear um, and call savage, ruthless killer, we've come to know and love his family, there's a different side to wolves that, that very few people get the chance to see. And hopefully through the documentaries and through the talks and discussions, people will see a different side of them. Because they've kind of been left out. People go and live with orangutans mm -hmm. and apes and elephants, etc. But you've taken it upon yourself to study the wolf properly. Mm -hmm. You've actually lived with them in the wild, just yourself and these yep. animals, for, for yeah. years. Two and a half years it was, yeah, yeah which was incredible. It's, um, you kind of discover more about you than you ever do your creature yourself. You know, they're, they're, they're phenomenal animals and every day is like it begins and ends in a miracle and just to be a part of that is, is absolutely fantastic. Can I ask you a simple question there? Is, why did they not attack you? Why did they not kill you, you know, if you were living with them in the wild? Mm. I think it's a really good question. I think that you can't be naive enough to think that you can walk into any wolf pack and, and come out completely unscathed. Uh, these guys, as I say, they, they are very serious about what they do. But they do respect family, and I think that was the important thing, to establish a family position with them, to get them to think that they need you as much as you need them. And once you've established that, then, you know, they are, they are quite forgiven in what they do. You make mistakes, as, as everybody else does, but they are quite forgiven. What, what can they teach us? I think the, 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 the first and foremost thing is, is we are certainly us in England, we, we've started to lose that community spirit now. Uh, most people would, wouldn't value anything above mum and dad raising a, a child these days. You've got a little one very shortly on the way. The Native American people and the wolf still believe that it takes an entire community to raise that child. And that, that knowledge about the environment passed down from grandfather to, to small child is very, very relevant within the wolf world. So you go in there and you mm. try to establish yourself within a wolf pack. And it's all about rank, right? <coughs> so. Yeah. When it, or a dog, or any mm. dog, do they think that you're the alpha dog? They know no. you're different, they know you're not yeah. a, a wolf, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you don't dress up or anything. By the way, you never bite your children around like that, do you? No. Okay, no. just checking. Yeah. Can well, you lick your balls? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> don't answer yes, sir. Because the Sorry. next question is, can you lick his? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you in the, the rank structure. of the wolf pack? Are you think, yeah, dog or I'm very, I'm very, I mean, the rank structure is a, an old term that we use for them, and I think it, it kind of highlights a, a mass division between top and bottom. We've got the alpha animal at the top, the omega at the bottom, and it, it creates too much of a gap, I feel. Living with them, being part of their family, it's more of a job specification. You have an individual job within that group, and that's what they see you as. It doesn't seem to matter whether you walk on two legs or four legs as long as you can do the job and tell them that you can do that job on a daily basis.